Hi, I'm Ashley Kelly, and I'm going to do a science biography over Albert Einstein and Max Planck. I chose these two physicists because um, I love quantum physics. So let's begin. Albert Einstein, German physicist and founder of the theory of relativity. He was born March 14, 1879 to Hermann Einstein, a salesman and engineer, and Pauline in Ulm, Germany. His ethnicity is Ashkenazi Jewish, and he's famous, famously known for his contributions in the theory of relativity, parts one and two, the photoelectric effect, the Brownian motion, the mass energy equivalence equation, the unified field theory, Einstein field equations, and Bose-Einstein statistics. Einstein's educational development. Although he was Jewish, what was interesting, I found out, um, he attended a Catholic school. He was a top student in elementary school, despite his speech impediment. And he would say often he used to repeat his own sentences. During that time frame, um, his family left for um, Italy and he decided to uh, stay behind to complete school, high school. He later withdrew to join his family in Italy. Instead of completing high school there, he tried to apply directly at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. He didn't get accepted um, and his family sent him away to go ahead and finish secondary school, high school. So in 1901, he received his diploma, and four years later, in 1905, he received his doctorate degree. Einstein's most famous equation, E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light, which is the constant, C, squared. It derived from Einstein's realization of the correlation between energy and a mass of an object. It suggests tiny amounts of mass can be converted to form huge amounts of energy. The equation ties together the key parts of nature, which is energy, the speed of light, and mass. Energy is measured in joules. Mass is measured in kilograms, and the constant speed of light is measured in meters per second. C equals 3.00 times 10 to the 8th pow power meters per second, or 300 million meters per second. For example, um, let's say we have an object that that's mass is um, 86.18 kilograms. We'll multiply that times the constant, C, and we will get for E 7.76 .76 times 10 to the 10th power in joules. The object's energy, let's say that the object is the average human mass would be equivalent to the magnitude of 1.86 million kilotons of the explosive energy in dynamite. And that's with using um, a conversion ratio to convert joules to kilotons. So I, I really thought that was pretty interesting information. So to move on, Albert Einstein, and his obsession with light. <laughs> Before Einstein even existed, 
No one clearly understood the principles of how light really worked. Is it a wave, a particle, or a quanta? Light did not follow Newtonian physics. In 1905, Einstein distributed a paper declaring that light travels both as a wave and as particles called quanta. He claimed that there is no other way but this one that light could travel in such a manner. The photoelectric effect. Albert Einstein discovered a phenomenon in which electrons are emitted from matter after the absorption of energy from electromagnetic radiation, such as X-rays or visible light, for example. His hypothesis was that the number of electrons released would not depend on the light's energy. Through several of his experiments, he confirmed this hypothesis. He won the Nobel Peace Prize of 1921 for his efforts in the field of physics on this particular discovery. Einstein's theories for the photoelectric effect extended the quantum theory, which Max Planck, who I will speak about later on, had developed in his successful ex explanation of black body radiation. Einstein postulated that light travels in packets whose energy depends on the frequency and therefore only light above a certain frequency would bring enough energy needed to free an electron. Okay, this one is what actually sparked an interest into the field of quantum physics. So, I, I don't know, I think it's pretty interesting. Einstein's theory of relativity, part one, special relativity. It is based on two postulates. The laws of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion relative to one another. The speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observ observers, regardless of their relative motion or of the motion of the light source. This resultant theory has many surprising consequences. One of them is time dilation. And that is, for instance, moving clocks are measured to tick more slowly than an observer's stationary clock. The second one um, that is surprising, length contraction, which explains moving clocks are measured to be shortened in the direction that they are moving with regards to the observer. Then there's um, relativity of simultaneity. And that is, for instance, let's say you got two events that are simultaneous to um, observer A. Those two events may not be simultaneous to observer B if um, observer B is in motion. So it's a different effect for um, the individual overall. Einstein has a part two of his theory of relativity called general relativity. And it applies primarily to particles as they accelerate due to gravitation. And also it was a radical revision of Newton's theory of gravity in predicting important new results for fast moving and or very massive bodies. So um, I listed some of the consequences of general rev relativity and they are um, gravitational time dilation. And to explain that, that's when time goes more slowly in higher gravitational fields. Another consequence 
is um, the fact of orbits moving in a way unexpected in Newton's theory of gravity. So this claim was backed by him observing the orbit of Mercury, and it also was reinforced by him observing it in binary pulsars. And what those are are, are celestial objects which rotate and emit pulses of electromagnetic radiation at a rate of up to a thousand N pulses per second. Another consequence is that rays of light bend in the presence of a gravitational field. So the last consequence of general re relativity would be frame dragging. And to detail that, that's um, when a rotating mass drags along the space time around it. Can you imagine that? I mean, that just opens up the door for things like time travel, for instance. I don't know. It's mind blowing. OK. Einstein and the atomic bomb. Einstein's mass energy equivalence equation that I spoke about earlier, E equals MC squared, was the key in the United States developing the atomic bomb. In 1939, a physicist named Leo Slizand and Einstein collaborated to write a letter and sign it to be presented to the president at the time, who is Franklin Roosevelt. In August of that year, Roosevelt approved the secret research. It involved the harnessing of nuclear fission for the sole purpose of military during World War II. They were determined to basically beat the Germans as far as them trying to get ahead with developing the atomic bomb because um, during that time war was really devastating for the world back then. Einstein later later on um, he expressed his deep regret for even proposing the letter to President Roosevelt. In 1947 he wrote an article for the Atlantic Mon Monthly arguing that the U.S. should not try to pursue an atomic mo monopoly and instead should equip the United Nations with nuclear weapons for the sole only the sole purpose of maintaining deterrence. So he does have a heart. I mean, I, I do consider that. Uh, I actually respect him even more for that. So to move forward. Now, uh, just to detail um, some of his awards and recognition. Um, I'll start with um, the year 1920. He got the Bernard Medal of Columbia University. In 21, he got the Nobel Peace Prize in physics for the quantum theory of light. In 1925, he got the Copley Medal of Royal S Society. In 1926, he received the Gold Medal of Royal Astronomical. In 1929, he received the Max Planck Medal of German Physical Society. And I do have a photo later on into this presentation that'll show um, them together. Um, in 1952, he was offered presidency of Israel, which I found to be interesting, but respectively, he declined. In the year 1999, 
Time Magazine's Person of the Century is what he received. For the Gallup poll, he was the fourth most admired of the 20th century. For um, the top 100, he was the most influential in history as the greatest science of the 20th century and one of the supreme intellects of all time. In 1990, his name was added to the Wahala Temple. Here's some interesting facts. Um, dealing with chemistry, um, the chemical element 99 on the periodic table of elements is named Einstein Einsteinium. A unit used in photochemistry, the Einstein, um, there's a, a institution named after him. And then um, there's also an asteroid named after him as well. And also um, there are two uh, rewards named after him. Um, the Einstein, Albert Einstein Award and the Albert Einstein Peace Prize. And also, um, by way of Mr. Robert Burks, there, uh, he designed the Albert Einstein Memorial. So he's highly re respected even today, even after the 20th century. And sadly, to bring me to, um, just a short review of how he passed away. Um, he died on April 18th in 1955 at the age of 76. He experienced internal bleeding, which was caused by an aortic aneurysm, and he died at the Princeton Hospital. The pathologist there, Thomas S. Harvey, decides to remove his brain before he's cremated. And he does this without the family's consent for preserving it in hopes that um, neuroscience of the future would be able to quickly dissect and study exactly what made him a genius. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that uh, without the family consent part, but the rest of his remains were cremated and scattered. I'm going to uh, close out his portion with one of his quotes that I find to be moving. True religion is real living, living with all one's soul and with all one's goodness and righteousness. So that's Albert Einstein. Now we're going to go ahead and proceed to the great Max Planck. Another great Max Carl Ernst Ludwig Planck German theoretical physicist and the founder of quantum theory. Max was born on April 23, 1858 in Kiel, Germany. He was the son of Julius Planck, a constitutional law professor, and Emma Planck. Max Planck's major contributions to physics are quantum theory, the Planck's constant, Planck's postulate, the law of black body radiation, and also thermodynamics. Just some background information on his educational development. In 1867, Max's family moved to Munich, Germany. He enrolled in the Maximilian Gymnasium, where he was advised by a great mathematician, Hermann Muller. He learned 
the subjects of astronomy, mechanics, mathematics, and the principle of conservation of energy. By 1874, he graduated at the age of 17. Here's a fun fact. Planck was musically inclined. He took singing lesson, lessons, played the piano, organ, and cello. He composed songs and operas, but instead of music, he decided to pursue the study of physics. I personally thought that was interesting being that I do play the viola and I've played ever since middle school. So I thought that was pretty cool. Music is everything. So to move forward, eight, from 1874 to 77, he attended the University of Munich where his physics professor was the great Philip von Jolly. In 1877 to 78, he transfers to the University of Berlin and changed his area of study to theoretical physics and thermodynamics. In 1879, he returned to the University of Munich to obtain his doctorate degree in physics and philosophy. So by the young age of 21, Planck completed his thesis on the second law of thermodynamics. The second law is my favorite entropy because, I mean, that applies to life in general and just how everything works, understanding how you go from birth to death or how, period, things can go from order to disorder. So, Planck's earliest work on thermodynamics, which he published papers in entropy, thermoelectricity and the theory of dilute solution. From this, he was able to realize the relationship between energy and the frequency of radiation. Planck's goal was to determine the process by which molecules exchange energy. So if there's an increase in entropy, there's also an increase in energy produced by heat. Planck classified this type of process as irreversible in accordance with perpetual motion of the second kind, whereas entropy is measured by a certain reversible process related to perpetual motion of the first time. And that right there um, imposes a, a limit on the amount of heat that can be transformed into energy. The entropy of the system of bodies is equal to the sum of the entropies of the individual bodies. All of his new discoveries in thermodynamics became the gateway for his quantum theory. And as you can see on the side, it's just like a little flow chart, just detailing um, information in regards to entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. So to move forward, and black body radiation. A black body is an object that absorbs all electromagnetic radiation that falls on it. No radiation passes through it and none is reflected. This is because no visible light is reflected or transmitted. Planck's law of black body ra radiation describes the spectral radiance of electromagnetic radiation at all wavelengths from a black body at 
temperature T. At T, the black body emits exactly the same wavelengths and intensities which would be present in an environment at equilibrium at T and which would be absorbed by the body. Radiation in such environment has a spectrum that depends only on temperature. Temperature of the object is directly proportional to the wavelengths of the light that it emits. The light emitted by a black body is called black body radiation. And to the side you have a I have a um graph here just detailing um the curves. You got um to the left intensity and at the um bottom you have wavelength. And like I said, it's just detailing the curves on how um black body uh, black body radiation occurs so to move forward planck's constant a physical constant used to describe the sizes of quanta in his quantum mechanics in 1900 he announced his discovery of the relationship that the energy emitted by a resonator could only take on discrete values or quanta. The energy E for a resonator of frequency V is HV, where H is a universal constant or Planck's constant. Planck's constant is the proportionality constant between energy of a photon and the frequency of its associated electromagnetic wave. This relation between energy and frequency is what's called the Planck relation. Okay. Planck's postulate. This is one of the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics. It's the postulate that the energy of oscillators in a black body is quantized, given by E equals NHV, where N is an integer, one, two, three, H is Planck's constant, of course, and V, which is not the English saying V or pronunciation V, it's actually the Greek letter nu, represents the frequency of the oscillator. This allowed him to derive a formula for the entire spectrum of the radiation emitted by a black body. He considered quantization as a math trick <laughs> rather than a fundamental change in the understanding of the world. This was further applied to the understanding of the Compton effect. This guy is a, a genius. <laughs> So to move forward, before I get into details on this slide, I just want to share a side note. During Max Planck's time of pursuing education at the University of Munich under Philip von Jolly, Philip von Jolly tells him, in this field of physics, Almost everything is already discovered, and all that remains is to fill a few unimportant holes. He basically tried to get Max to think about other subjects to pursue besides physics. So let me go ahead and um, 
go on, get on this slide and let that marinate. He discovers the quantum theory. And basically that's saying he believes human understanding of atomic and subatomic processes considers the law of everything else. It underpins for particle physics. Also, quantum theory describes the theory that all forces between particles are carried out by other particles. Basically, all forces are particles. It governs the way all matter interacts, whether it be light entering the eye or electrons orbiting a nucleus of an atom. All energy is transmitted in wave packets or quantum. And reading the quote, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which bring the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. The mind is the matrix of all matter. That's a powerful statement. So let me move forward. These are some of the academic positions held by Planck. From 1880 to 85, he was a teacher at the University of Munich. From 1885 to 88, he was an associate professor of theoretical physics at the University of Kiel. From 1888 to 1927, he was a professor at the University of Berlin until he retired. During the year of 1894, he was an appointed member of the Royal Prussian Academy of Sciences. Later on, in uh, 1912, he was appointed permanent secretary. In 1905 to 08, he was the chairman of the German Physical Society. From the year uh, later on, from the year 1915 to 16, he was appointed as chairman again. In the year 1930 to 37, he was the president of the Kaiser Wilhelm Society for the Advancement of Science. He was also appointed as president again, 1945 to 46. He was a member of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences. In 1926, he was a foreign member of the Royal Society. In 1933, he was a foreign member of the American Philosophical Society. In 1937, he was a foreign member of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. And also, to add, he received honorary doctorates from nine universities, Frankfurt, Munich, Rostock, Berlin, Graz, Athens, Cambridge, London, and Glasgow. Awards and recognition. 1915, he was awarded the Pour Le Moir for science and arts. He became the chancellor of that order in 1930. In 1918, he won the Nobel Peace Prize in physics for his discovery of energy quanta. In 27, he won the Lorentz Medal for theoretical physics. In 1928, he was awarded the Adler Shield des Duchen Reich, awarded by the German Reich president. 1929, he got the Copeland Medal for theoretical physics and as the originator of quantum theory. In 1929, the Max Planck Medal was shared with Albert Einstein. He's the author of the following works. You got thermodynamics, theory of heat radiation, lectures and reminders, memories, and a posthumous work called Planck's Academic Speeches. 1938, asteroid 1069 Stella Planckia was named after him. In 1963, in his honor, the lunar crater on the moon named 
plank. The loss of another ma master teacher. The death of Max Planck. He died on October 4th, 1947 at the age of 89. His cause of death is an unknown, although it has been rumored to believe that he was ultimately grief stricken after the execution of his son, Edwin, who attempted to assassinate Adolf Hitler in 1945. I did not know that and I thought that was interesting. Um, Max Planck was buried in Gottingen, Germany at the Gottingen City Cemetery. I'm going to close out this presentation with his quote, Whence come I and whither go I? That is the great unfathomable question, the same for every one of us. Science has no answer to it. My name is Ashley Kelly again, and thank you for listening to this presentation.